Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Life on Turkey Lane. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Um, I just have a short little video to do. I have uh, some herbs that I need to harvest again. and um, But this time, I'm going to dehydrate them in an unconventional way. I'm not going to use my dehydrator. So uh, let's get started with that. Um, so I'm going to aim you down here at my little plants now. This little basil plant has been... See if I can get you down where you can see all that. Um, this little basil plant here is actually like two little plants, but I've had trouble with this one ever since I planted it. I have some of the leaves that we've had a lot of rain, and I've had some of the leaves that kind of get a little black spots on them. So we're not going to be using those. Um, I'm just going to pick a few of those off there. Um, but I'm going to start, I'm going to harvest a lot of this plant, these plants, and dry them um, for use. And I'm just going to throw this on the ground out here, and we have chickens or whatever that will come eat them. But anyway, um, we've had a lot of rain, and it drips kind of off of our roof, too. The gutters need to be cleaned out, and they're not working right. And as you can tell, the rain has... a uh, kind of made this parcel plant kind of bend over a little bit. But that's okay because we're going to harvest a lot of that and it'll grow back up. These uh, plants I actually harvested just a little over a week ago and they're growing back like astronomically fast. And so, but first before we get started on that, I'm going to bring you over to this pot. Um, now see, there's a little, let me see if I can get you back here. There's a little bitty basil start right here that I propagated, uh, well, a little over a week ago when I harvested everything. So, um, I'm going to set you down. I don't know how much you can see because the sun's kind of out here and stuff. But this little basil, I just picked the little top off of my basil and I popped it in the dirt there. I didn't even really water it or anything. I just popped it down in the dirt. And the first couple days, of course, it looked like wilty and it was going to die. But then it started growing roots, and it's going to shoot up and be another basil plant. And I'm going to show you how I did that with my basil over here. Okay, in this pot, I also have parsley, oregano, and basil. And as you can see, I mean, this one I didn't even know. I harvested it so much I didn't think it was going to grow back. And look how much there is, that parsley there. And I've got tons. Of oregano will just take over. And then I've got this nice basil plant here, and this is just one plant. But I'm going to show you how you can propagate your basil, and we're going to do another start. And I'm just going to bring you back here, see if I can get you in view there good. And I'm just going to pick a little start off of one of these basil. I'm just going to top it. I'm just going to pick it right there. That's all I took off. That's all the stem there is to it right there. And I'm just going to take a little spot in the dirt right here. And I'm going to pop that in there and close the dirt around it. Now, for a few days, like I said, today it'll look fine. Tomorrow and the next couple days it'll look pretty weak and stuff. But it will take root and it will make a new plant just like this. So um, that's all there is to propagating basil. It's super easy. Um, so anyway, let's get started on harvesting some of this. I brought my scissors out. Sis, hang on guys, I gotta catch the dog. Well, the adventures at Life on Turkey Lane, guys. I had to go chase the dog down. She got out the gate over here. And so I had to go she won't come back unless you get in your car and you go get her. So calling her doesn't help. So I had to go do that. And now I'm back. So, but anyway, that's how you propagate a basil. And super easy. And now we're going to get to harvesting this. Um, what do I just do with my scissors? Let me grab them. Here they are. And 
You'll know how much rain we got the last couple days. We had a paint bucket out here that we had used up finishing trying to paint the deck here. And the bucket is three quarters of the way full with water. So, but anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and nip these basil plants back. And I'm going to do, I'm going to take about two thirds of the entire plant here. And this one's kind of, kind of, uh, kind of thick, so. There we go. So I've got quite a harvest just off of that one little plant there. Um, and I, I really scalped that thing. There's not a whole lot there, but it will grow back. So uh, then let's get the parsley. Now the parsley you want to nip. You want to nip it off so you can see where these have already been nipped. That's what I harvested not too long ago. And now you don't want to take these young tender shoots right there. Um, but you want to nip your tall ones. And you just nip it off close to the base. And uh, actually that one I probably should have left there. But we're just going to take some of those shoots. Okay, I think I'm going to leave the rest of that intact. But that's a pretty good harvest on the parsley. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do any oregano this time. But yeah, that, that rain has done a little bit of damage to some of these plants. Not a whole lot, but and that's to be expected. You're going to get rain and stuff after you plant stuff. And hopefully you do because that's how you water your plants. But anyway, I think, uh, well... I might go ahead and harvest uh, some more of the uh, that too, but I've got mint out front that I need to harvest again. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest some of this oregano. And oregano, like I said, it is a prolific grower, kind of like mint. Um, it will take over, and so it doesn't hurt to cut it back and get quite a bit of this. And actually plants do like to be, uh, plants do like to be uh, oh, pruned. Basil especially, basil does well when it's pruned. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take one of those leaves. Um, because basil has leaves in there the small leaves can't really grow when you got all that on top of it but now those smaller leaves will get big and it, it is the stems will still grow tall and so so I'm just giving all these a good pruning I think I'm gonna get quite a good big oregano harvest this time okay let's see now we'll go back over to the other pot and I'll start harvesting over there. And like I said, this pot, the basil, was not looking too, too good. Um, almost from the time I planted it, it started getting some black leaves. And we'll, we'll pull those off and get rid of those. We won't use them. So anyway, I'm just going to scalp this. I'm going to top this little guy here. And I think I see the reason why. We had a little, little caterpillar there. So I'm going to separate that. See, I wish I could have killed the little caterpillar, but I don't know where he went. There he is. Okay, little dude. They're kind of hard to see because they almost look like the dirt. He was kind of black. I don't know if I can, if you can see that there. I'm kind of squishing him with my scissors, but there's a little caterpillar there. And he's the culprit of why my leaves are turning black. So he's been on there, or somebody has, for quite a while. But I'm going to go ahead and harvest these back. And I'm going to do a good chop on them. 
I'm not even being careful, especially on this plant because they're looking pretty rough. When I first noticed them start doing that, I gave them a good cleaning. I never did find a, a caterpillar on it, but I gave it a good cleaning and got rid of all the black leaves. But it just, like I said, we've got so much rain too. But that little, that little caterpillar has done a number on this dude. These dudes, I should say. There's two of them. But now that I got him... And that might have been on him on there when I got it from the store. You never know. Because uh, sometimes that will happen. So anyway, I'm just taking kind of the damaged leaves off of here. Trying to get it as clean as possible. So maybe we don't keep having that problem. Okay. Now I'm going to harvest this parsley. And like I said, I'm just going to take the bigger stems and I'm going to harvest them right up close to the base of the plant here. We're going to leave the young shoots on there. Put these on the table. I barely left on, much on there, but it will grow back. Let's grab some of this uh, oregano here. Now this oregano has really got the legs on it. So anyway, what are you guys doing this summer? Um, we're not going to be taking much of a vacation or anything. Might do a day trip or two here and there. Um, but we had to take off uh, about a month ago for, like I said, our little family deal that we had to do. And um, I think the rain has gotten a lot of my dirt out of this uh, thing here and I'm probably going to have to fill in sometime pretty soon but anyway so we're not going to be taking much of a vacation or anything and uh, but we're going to take some day trips so I might bring you along on those um, so there we go I've harvested all those and here is the results of that harvest um, this is the basil I'm going to have to go through with a fine tooth comb and get off any leaves that are have black on them or make sure there's no um, critters on them or anything like that. These are the good basil. Um, then we got the, a pile of oregano and a pile of parsley. And I'm going to get them ready and get them on some trays. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do to dehydrate those. And I'll be back in a little bit. Okay guys, like I said, I've got my uh, I've got my herbs all prepped and like I said, I am going to dehydrate these in a non-conventional way. I did put the herbs on my dehydrator trays, but let me show you what I did. I have put them on the tray upside down and I'm going to dehydrate them in the vehicle. We're getting ready. I would have done it in my car, but we're getting ready to head out for some little daytime enjoyment on the weekend. And so I'm using my husband's truck and his is a little messy. Um, 
but I'm just gonna sit the trays in the truck and like I said they're upside down and the reason I did that is because I want airflow underneath the herbs so the air can flow around them and they'll dry. So I'm just gonna put these in the vehicle, one tray at a time. I'm even gonna put some on the dashboard here. Now no dirt is gonna get on these, um, but they are gonna dry. And uh, I'll show you in here. So I have just put the trays, like I said, I've put the herbs on them upside down. So there's airflow underneath there and it will, um, the air will circulate around those. And now it's warm out today. It's about 90 degrees out. And when I shut this truck door, it's gonna get to be about 100 degrees or so. And that's the perfect temperature for herbs to dry. And so I would think these are going to be, now the ones in the window, and I put the basil up there for a reason because they do take a little while to dry, a little longer to dry than most because they're a real damp herb. Um, so anyway, I've just put the herbs in there on their trays. We're going to shoo that fly out, and I'm going to close the door. And these herbs are going to dry probably, I'm hoping, in about four to five hours. So it's around noon right now and so probably by evening time when the sun starts to go down I'm going to check these and see if they're dry and uh, we'll be back to see what they look like okay so stay tuned stay t hang tight uh, so they say uh, but I'll be back. Okay I've got the hubs here I'm just going to kind of add this to the videos make like a little compilation of different things. He went out cat fishing again last night. And brought home a couple of nice channel catfish, and he's cleaning them and making sure they're deboned and de-skinned. I do not like the skin, and of course nobody likes the bones. And so he is doing that right now. See if I can get you out here in the action. See, he's taking the skin off of that yeah, and made a real really, nice fillet. Yeah, they're fatty. They come from the Gasconade River. They're nice and fatty. Nice, nice and fatty. Um, so we probably got about what, maybe five pounds of catfish stocked up so far. Yeah, probably. I got a gallon freezer bag, and I'm on a second gallon freezer bag. So anyway, here's another little nice fish. Little fish. He's kept it in on ice. Yeah. For a few hours. But anyway, she's a she he nice size fish there. Good eating cat. size channel catfish. Channel cat. I'm no expert, but I, my dad would come fish for um, I will only eat pretty much my husband's fish, and I used to eat my father-in-law's fish, um, because they get them cleaned good enough where I don't have to be scared of bones and different things like that, and they never have that muddy water taste because they clean all that gray skin off and the silver skin off. And I waste you waste a little bitty bit of meat up here, but um, I don't. I like we like the flays, and I don't mess with that little bit around there. And I cut the rib meat off there too. I mean, lots of cook it. If they're a small catfish, you need to probably cut them whole. You can't really small enough for that. Some guys save the belly meat, but I'm gonna save the belly meat. They're not. These are really fat. The belly meat is nice. A lot of bones and stuff that you have to mess with down in that belly meat. On a flathead, I would do it though, but on this here, nice fillet. I gotta take the skin off still. So I miss a little bit here. And there's your rib, which I end up sometimes I'll cut the rib out and I just fillet it out. These go back to the rib. So, anyway, what he does with the extra parts there is he freezes them. And then uh, a lot of times when he goes fishing, he'll take them down to the river and he just throws them in the water and there's lots of scavengers in there that will eat that. And um, so it's not wasted. 
um, and we don't throw it out, you know, in the yard or anything like that and make things all smelly. So, um, so yeah, anyway, so I'm thrilled and thankful uh, that he's found a couple places that are pretty good, decent for fishing. Because we want to have a good fish fry later on this uh, summer and fall. We are going to, definitely. And even though I'm pretty good about it, I always tell people just you have to always be aware of fish. You can have a weird, some fish have a little bone, you'll miss a bone, or they'll be a little bit deformed. Not 100% you're going to get every bone sometimes. I always try to check with my so hands. So anyway, uh, my husband and my father-in-law always did a good job of flaying their fish where there were no bones. And the gray skin, the silver skin was pulled off. That's why I don't like processed uh, catfish. Um, yeah, way. we don't like to buy catfish in the boxes from the grocery store because some's they do okay, not clean them very good. Some better, I mean, some good, but sometimes you get those boxes where they're just all gray. And I can get what they want to eat it. It's too, too fishy for them. I mean, I guess that's where to say fish too. Play it like the guys are great. I don't know, as a kid, we got to do a hand play, fill them out with pliers. Yeah, back years ago they used to flay them with just a regular fillet knife and um, these electric fillet knives are wonderful. Yeah. Um, and I'm done. That's actually, I'm, so I'm anyway. going to clean this. I'm going to cut this one up. Okay. Just cut it down a little bit more. I thought I felt a sharp bone in here. I don't know how I got it. I must have got a little bit of back on it. A lot of guys would tear me up. They'd say, hey, you're wasting fish. I know I work, I go fish, but I would rather be safe with them. I'm, I like a little chunky flavor. That's why I'm cutting it. A lot of fat on that fish. Yeah, when we do our fish fries, we do uh, hush puppies, of course, and we also fry up some potatoes and onions and man, it's good stuff. I make homemade tartar sauce, and so when we get ready to do that later this year, I'll bring you along, okay? And so, um, uh, now I might have a few other things to put on this video. I don't know yet, but uh, we'll just see about that, and so I'll be back in a while. Because people are messy doesn't always mean it's a flea market, Mom. Okay, so it's Saturday. We're leaving the house. Just doing a little day, like, roaming around type trip. And um, I think we're going to head towards Crocker, Missouri. And go to one of my favorite um, little flea markets, antique mall things um, in this area. And so that is if they're open because it's 1.30 and I don't know how late they're open to. So we'll see about that. And then I think we're going to check out some conservation areas um, Creek. for fishing and different things like that. I think there's one called Slitz Creek. I wanted to make sure that I took my time when I said that so I didn't mess up and say something bad. <laughs> so anyway, so that's what we're doing. And uh, when we get to, I don't know if I'll be able to do any filming or anything at the flea market or whatever. I don't know if I want to, um, but we'll we don't just, want uh, <laughs> but I, if I buy something though, I'll let you know, or if I see something really cute, I might take a shot of it or something. But anyway, so that's what we're doing right now. And uh, I'll be back in a little while and give you some updates or let you know if there's something else we're going to be doing. And uh, we might head, because that's on the way kind of to Lake of the Ozark, so we might head over that way afterward. I'm not sure. So we'll just have to see. We uh, normally, when we do these little day trips like this, we just kind of take off. We don't really have much of a plan in mind, and we just uh, drive until we see something cool and stop and 
different things like that so anyway so i'll be back in a little while i was listening to okay we're coming up on the bear creek antiques place this is one of my favorites in this area it's a nice one yeah and they're open um a lot of the booths are in like a storage shed outdoors and then they have an in, uh, another building there that, um, so anyway. Yeah, so. Don't bring a truck when you bring your wife. Yeah, in he won't bring the truck when we go to this place because he's afraid I'll buy something big. <laughs> anyway, so here we are at, oh, it's Bear Ridge. I thought it was called Bear, I think it used to be called Bear Creek. Um, but anyway, we're gonna do a little looking around. Anyway, each one of these little storage sheds are kind of like a booth that people have set up. And um, I probably won't show you around all of them, but you know, there's just lots of cool old stuff. I love the like the enamelware pans there um, and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, just some neat stuff. I like those little old chairs. Hey guys, now see, talking about dehydrating, I don't know if you can see it. I don't, I don't want to turn my camera. Um, but anyway, one of these old screens, the, fr the frame screens that they used to use on the old houses, this one here is 12 bucks. That's not a bad price. Um, and you can use that to dehydrate uh, your herbs and stuff. So keep an eye out for some of those. If you don't want to buy a dehydrator and don't want to use a, an electric one, Buy something like that and you can do some dehydrating real easy. It's got some old tin ceiling tiles for uh, $29.99 each. Um, it's not bad because it's like a, almost a double panel. So, um, so it would almost actually be like $15 a piece. It's got a couple old doors back there. I love old doors. Um, they've got some sewing machine drawers down there, old sewing machine drawers. Those are cool to make like floral decorations or use for different kinds of storage. A little chicken feeder thing. Twelve seventy nine for that. It's not bad. Well, I like the little uh Aren't those cute? Those little uh, signs or little shelf sitters is what I call them. Um, cute stuff. Looky out here, we got a sidewalk sale almost, and they have some cute, cute stuff. Mm -hmm. I love this uh, coffee table. Oh, that, that coffee is amazing. Table. I just brought that back this morning. It Do had you... paint all over the top. Yeah. I brought it back from Indiana. It was a table. And the legs rotted so I had to cut them and I just re-sanded it all so the paint doesn't chip anymore. I yeah. Oh, I love that. We did the drawers. Oh, love I love it. it. Yeah, I do. I mm -hmm. love that. I just brought it back this morning and honestly, I'm kind of surprised it didn't sell already because... Yeah, for nice. sure. It's and if I had room for it in the house, it, I, I would be know. taking it home. Coffee tables are tricky because most people already have a coffee table. Yeah. But. Well, and I'm $150 is not bad for that. Um, I have a coffee table. It's kind of more like an ottoman coffee table, mm -hmm. and I would rather have something like that, but I don't. I think it's a little bit big it is, for it's my. A good size. I have a small living room, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's great, and I love the gourd over there. I yeah. want to try growing some gourds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fifty percent off too. Awesome. All right, I'll let you look. Thank you. Ooh, some cool corbels. Yeah, I love this booth. I love the old chairs, the old crates. Nice, nice stuff. Look at the old level. That is, you can't even see the bubble in it anymore, really, because it's so old. Love this kind of stuff. That little dresser is cute as a button. It's another view of that beautiful table. 
that chair is cool. For a while, that was a style, that uh, deconstructed look. I don't think that would be very comfortable to sit in, though. Some little tchotchkes. Could probably find just some really cute stuff in here. There's a great little potting bench. And uh, up on top there, there's a couple of those produce baskets like I have at home. These are a little bit uh, more grayed down and worn than mine, but cute. Love that. Old ladders. Some uh, sheet metal. Lots of um, shutters. My husband's over there looking and stuff. If you're into crosses, that is a nice cross that you can redo. Beautiful. With a little mirror in it. And let's see what the price is. I don't see a price on it. It just says lacrosse mirror. Some more of the enamel wear. Guys, look at that old crusty ladder. I love it. You know, you pay a pretty good price for the kind of like the Hobby Lobby ones and stuff. This one's $18. That's cheaper than you can get a ladder at Hobby Lobby. And I'm telling you, I wouldn't mind picking that up for my bathroom, but I'm not going to. But you kind of scrape a little bit of the chippy paint off and seal it up and you can use it in your house. And you've saved yourself money versus buying something at Hobby Lobby that's not even real heavy wood, not antique. And um, so that one there is a real vintage one. Pretty cool. I love the goose, see the goose? <laughs> I'm getting ready to go in the main building and I'm not gonna do any videoing in there because I don't think they would appreciate it. I might, if I do do any filming, it will be without talking. So um, here's on the porch, I love the little, the chicken. Um, nesting boxes, love the rocking chairs, all kinds of cute, cute stuff. The yard rooster, <laughs> cute stuff. In your way. Oh, you're fine, huh? Right. I'll be just in home next. Okay. Look, have you ever seen a toaster that old? Yeah, I don't that think is, I have. Mine. That's that, unreal. That's before my time, my 30, 40 years. I'm going to say 30s. That's a bar stool. 
it's going to recover. That's so cute. Quilts. Real hand stitch quilts. that one is. I have seen some real ones um, in this area, but, but yeah, that one's not. Well, if you see one in here, can we just haul her? <laughs> okay, sure. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's a cold pressure canner. It's giant. $10. It's a what pressure canner? Yeah, but Oh, for a water bath canner? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's about as light as you're going to get. They sell them about that size at Walmart. They're like 20 bucks new, but that one's actually got the little it's got the hanger, the hanger in there. Well, I don't okay, know. I mean, yeah. I, I thought it's yeah. that it's yeah, this I kind of material. Up. This here, it's, I don't know. I mean, is that a good deal or not? Yeah. I mean, yeah, like yeah. Go ahead and grab it. Huh? Go ahead and grab it because I needed one. Is that like a good deal though? Yeah. I mean, surely you don't get them like out of this stuff like that for. No, that's enamel wear. That's fine. That 10 bucks is not bad. You that thing in there? Yeah. Yeah, that seems like a good deal. See, I was going to get a fishing rod. This is what we got. Okay. My iron dog. That is okay. What a deal, man. You just cannot hurry. Right Don't do that. So we're down at the Lake of the Ozarks, and you can see right ahead of us as we're getting ready to cross over the bridge here, you can see the lake. Um, it used to be a lot prettier of a scene coming down this way, but they've changed the highway over the years, and you can't quite see as much of it as you used to. So, um, but yeah, we're heading into Camdenton, Missouri. off to the left you can okay. see the water on that side on that and side. you can see the water on that side to my Few right too today. yeah there's a lot of boats down there both sides. There's a, there's like uh, we don't take our boat out on lake of the ozarks because it's, um, kind of it's kind of rough and choppy sometimes with you get these big boats out there that are speeding around and uh, they'll just take uh, our boat's not small by any means but um it would take ours under some of it so there's one of the big yeah, flea market and antique malls. Right. But anyway, yeah, so we're just cruising around here and just uh, enjoying some time. And so um, I think this is Highway 54 or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, there you go. So you just saw Lake of the Ozarks. Okay, so we're getting ready to go in and eat at Tonka Hills Restaurant. Actually, just around this area is Ha Ha Tonka State Park. We're not going there today because it's already after 5 o'clock in the evening. But so this is where we're going to eat, and I guess we'll see how their food is. Okay, so guys, we ate at this uh, Honka Hills restaurant, and I had chicken fried chicken, and man, was the food good. Um, I am stuffed like a pig. And the bad thing is, though, is I went into the bathroom after I ate, and I looked in the mirror and I didn't realize that when I walked into the restaurant, my um, my hair was just a complete and utter mess. It was like sticking out everywhere. And, I, and these people probably thought that I'm a real dork and a hillbilly or something. And was probably thinking, thank gosh, that girl could have fixed herself up a little bit before she stopped in a restaurant. But anyway, so we had really good food and now really we're getting good. ready to head. I think we're going to try to stop at... If it's not dark by the time we get there, we're going to try to stop it. What's the name of that place, hon? We're the, probably not going to make it. But, the uh, 
Sluggy Creek or something. Sluggy, yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember what Sluggy it's called. Creek, but yeah. So if we Slits. do stop there, oh, Slit, Slicks Creek Slits or something. Creek. Slits Creek. We're going to try to stop. So if we do, I'll film some of that. Otherwise, we're heading home. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, y'all, so we did not stop at uh, really any conservation areas on the way home. Well, we did stop at one. Um, Andy went down and looked at the river edge or creek edge, whatever it was, spring. I think it was a spring, Toronto spring, and uh, about the fishing and different things. Um, I didn't travel down there. It was pretty steep slope, and um, it was pretty weedy and stuff and and I get ate up by mosquitoes every time I'm out so <laughs> I did not go down there um but I did hit the jackpot on the way home we we got caught in a storm and anyway um I'm gonna see if I can turn the camera around here in just a minute and um show you some different things but uh I have been stopping at Dollar General's everywhere we can find one for the last three weeks. Anytime we leave the house and we go to a different area or whatever, um, because I have been looking for something in particular. Um, actually, there, there was a couple things that I was looking for, and a couple weeks ago or a week or so ago, I found two of the things. Um, but then I had to find this one thing because it goes with one of the other things that I bought a week or so ago. So, but anyway, I'll show you those um, here in just a minute. I'm going to turn the camera around. Okay, so um, I've been looking for this little recipe tin, this recipe box. Um, it's a little tin. Sorry that made so much noise there. Um, so I found that at one of the Dollar Generals, I don't know, like I said, a week or two ago. And while I was there, I also found um, this little pepper tin. And so, but they didn't have any of the salt tins, and I, or it's a salt, it's ceramic. They're ceramic little jars. Um, and anyway, I have been to probably $25 generals in the last few weeks looking for one. And when we were in this rainstorm, we come across a Dollar General that I hadn't been to. And um, so I braved the wind and the rain and got soaking wet. Um, but they had the little salt tin. And so, I am just so thrilled I found the salt tin. I've been looking for it forever. And guess what? It was half price. <laughs> so, of course, they were only $2 anyway. So, I got it for a dollar. So, that is that made, made my trip for me. So, um, anyway, um, I think I'm going to end this episode with that. Well, maybe not because I still have the, um, I'm not going to be able to check the, the herbs to see if they've dehydrated today in the truck. Um, because like I said, it is pouring down rain outside and even if they were dehydrated, they would just get wet coming back into the house. So I will check that. Um, if the rain stops here soon, I might check that. Otherwise I'll be back in the morning and we'll check that. But so anyway, I'm super thrilled to find this little salt box. Um, Cause like I said, I've been to every Dollar General. My, my son said, no more Dollar Generals, mom, please no more Dollar Generals. And so, um, but I found that today and now my search is over. I don't have to go into a Dollar General for a while. <laughs> so, but um, Dollar General is really, they are getting some really, really cute. They're redoing a lot of their stores and they're getting some really, really cute home decor and stuff for real cheap. So um, you might check out your local Dollar General if you haven't been in a while and see if you can find some things you really like. So anyway, I'll be back uh, to check the herbs in a little while. Okay guys, so it's been about 24 hours since I put the uh, herbs in the truck here. <laughs> A lot longer than I thought it was going to be. We, I was only going to do it about four hours. But when we got back uh, yesterday evening, um, it was pouring down rain. And so I waited till today to come out here. And I can tell you by looking in the window, these things are dry. As a matter of fact, the ones in... Let me turn you around here so you can see them. The ones that were in the window are definitely very dry. I put the basil up there because it has a tendency to be... Um, to not want to dry out good and there are still some that aren't quite dry on that um, 
I think that is mint and it should be dry. We've got the oregano there and the parsley is not quite dry yet. And that is mint down there and it is not quite dry yet either. Sorry for putting my finger in front of the thing there. So what I'm gonna do is switch some of the trays around here since we got some nice sun out right now. Might have to put the camera down for this, but. Um, and I'm gonna set that parsley in the window there. And take this mint out of the window here. And I'm gonna put the oregano in the window there. Um, while the sun is out, see if I can get some more of these things up here drying. Okay, I'm going to take these around and put them at the other, in the other window here. Or actually, I can go ahead and put them in my car. I'll probably do that. Um, so anyway, so this just goes to show you that you don't have to have, um, a dehydrator per se to dehydrate your herbs and you can you can use a window screens um, you can even use a sheet tray actually the sheet tray might have dried these quicker because there are isn't any airflow to it and it would just be um, almost like baking in the Sun so anyway there you go um, so I just put those the ones that are still damp up in the window there I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some of these in my car and we're gonna finish drying these so I can get it in the jars okay so we're gonna check the uh, the leftover herbs that I kept in the truck we've got uh, the parsley's up here uh, it's still not real super crispy um, the oregano is done so the parsley is getting there though, so it won't be too much longer for those. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this tray and uh, bring it inside the house. And um, so there you go. Um, you, that's just showing you don't have to have anything real special to dehydrate herbs. You can do it right here in a, a, a hot car. And um, you don't even need a dehydrator tray like I'm using. You can use just about anything. Set it on parchment paper. Just just on parchment paper should be fine. So anyway, there you go. Um, I thank you for watching this very long, what was supposed to be a short video, but ended up being a very long video here at Life on Turkey Lane. I hope you enjoyed our little trip that we shared with you. And um, I hope that you have a wonderful, blessed evening. And I'll see you next time. Bye.